Hey everybody, this is James Tracy, MemoryHoleBlog.org, and I just have a quick uh, update. An important um, development here as the Microsoft Corporation changes its user agreement, uh, primarily with consumers. Those who use the Windows operating system will now be subject to um, potential copyright restrictions and uh, restrictions on your speech what you share on any um, any platforms while using the Microsoft operating system once again. Uh, this um, was an email that was sent out that was forwarded to me by a uh, by a colleague. It says Microsoft your services agreement made clearer. Says we are updating the Microsoft Services Agreement, which applies to your use of Microsoft consumer online products and services. We're making these updates to clarify our terms and ensure that they remain transparent for you. It was on to say these updates, which are summarized below, will take effect on October 1st of 2020. And if you continue using their products and services, that implies your agreement to the new stipulations in their new terms. Um, the first concern here once again is copyright and fair use and the second is free speech. Now we know that Facebook and Twitter and Google already restrict um, speech online and uh, generally along their political preferences and um, that's one thing because these are online platforms. Um, but it's quite another matter when you have an entire operating system that um, most computer users use today if they don't use uh, Apple. Very few use Linux, although it might be time to actually look into that, which is an um, open source operating system uh, that qu requires a bit more uh, computer savvy. Uh, than uh, Windows. But anyway, let's dig into this a bit further. Um, it states concerning your content, uh, and this is really up front in, the, um, in their overall agreement uh, with us. It says, we don't claim copy ownership of your content. Your content remains your content, and you are responsible for it. Once again, we don't claim ownership of your content. Your content remains your content, and you were responsible for it. Well, that all sounds very good, but let's dig in a little bit deeper. It says, you represent and warrant that for the duration of these terms, you have and will have all the rights necessary for your content that is uploaded, stored, or shared on or through the services that the collection, use, and retention of your content will not violate any laws or rights of others, Microsoft cannot be held responsible for your content and so forth. So uh, if you're a blogger, you take a screenshot of something and um, it, it it's of a photograph or some artwork that you did not create, uh, these are grounds for Microsoft uh, curtailing your, um, your activity on its platform. So that is with regard to copyright and they are stating that you can't infringe on anyone's copyright um, and that fair use, which was just a defense to begin with, really, uh, is is out the window. Uh, and if they begin to enforce this, I would imagine that they would have uh, many individuals that um, do not have rights, express rights, to some of the things that they're using online or elsewhere uh, that they would have to um, curtail their services. Now, uh, continuing on here to the code of conduct that uh, Microsoft has recently revised, it states that you do not engage in activity that is harmful to you, the services, or others. In other words, transmitting viruses, stalking, posting terrorist and, or violent extremist content, communicating hate speech, or advocating violence against others. Okay, well, who defines what terrorist or violent extremist content or hate speech 
actually is? Could this be um, a revisionist view of history, of, uh, of complex uh, current events, things that are deemed to be quote unquote conspiracy theories because they are beyond the pale of current um, academic or conventional thought and uh, quote unquote wisdom? It looks as if that in fact is the case. So we will have fairly powerful activist organizations um, with a whole lot of wherewithal uh, whispering into Microsoft's ear saying, this is hate speech. You'll have to take it down and curtail the uh, activities of this user or these users or this publisher or this company uh, from your services. It says enforcement. Now here's something that's um, that's also of, of great concern. If you violate these terms, we may stop providing services to you or we may close your Microsoft account. We may also block delivery of a communication like email, file sharing, or instant message to or from the service in an effort to enforce these terms, or we, we may remove or refurbish, re refuse to publish your content for any reason. When investigating alleged violations of these terms, Microsoft reserves the right to review your content in order to resolve the issue. So here it is, Microsoft uh, meets Facebook and Twitter and Google, and they are going to begin enforcing very similar anti-free speech policies on their users beginning October 1st of this year. This is really serious cause for concern uh, because it will likely uh, go against uh, certain political preferences, views, perspectives, uh, as has been the case with, um, with Twitter, with Facebook, uh, with the media, social media uh, tech giants. And it's also going to go uh, this way here. And Apple, of course, is no refuge uh, because Apple is uh, similarly um, politically motivated and biased um, with specific leftist liberal views. This is James Tracy, memoryholeblog.org, and we'll see you soon. Um, take care. God bless. Uh, please do support us. Uh, consider joining our Patreon so that we can continue providing uh, this material to you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.